Hey everybody, welcome back. Yes, you read correctly. Now apparently natural gas is dangerous too, and you should fear that as well. As alluded to by the title, they are trying to dial in the concept of natural gas being dangerous to your health and to the environment, contributing to poor health and to climate change, because we can't say global warming anymore, everybody's wise to that, but climate change is such a broad spectrum statement that you can't deny that the climate does technically change. So yeah, a little clever play on words there, but back to the point. Now they're saying, oh, benzene and other toxic chemicals are leaked into the atmosphere, causing uh, cancer, it's carcinogenous and other health problems and it's dangerous to the environment and we're going to read an article on this and we're going to talk about this a little bit and this particular article comes from the boston globe online and you can pick your poison you know you can find the same information on a ton of articles because all of a sudden this is the big thing this is all over the news the last few days to tell you something that these companies have known for decades. They've probably known it since they first started pumping natural gas, but now it's a problem. Now it's a problem. Let's look at the article. And you'll notice that they're talking specifically about California here. The gas that is piped into millions of California homes contains hazardous air pollutants, including benzene, a chemical linked to cancer, a new study found. It's not a new study, it's an old study. They're just doing it again so they can act like it's a new study. And if they manage to get rid of natural gas in California, it will set a precedence that will cascade into the rest of the country, which is why this is important to make note of right now. The researchers estimated that each year California gas appliances and infrastructure leak the same amount of benzene as is emitted by nearly 60,000 cars but these leaks are unaccounted for in the state's records. The study published Thursday in the journal Environmental Science and Technology adds to a growing debate over proposals to limit the use of gas in homes because of its impact on climate change and public health. That issue has surfaced most notably in California where in 2019 Berkeley became the first city to ban gas hookups in most new homes and buildings. Since then, dozens of cities in California and around the country have enacted similar ordinances. And there you go. There's your precedence being set. Researchers have documented significant indoor air pollution and negative health impacts from using gas stoves. You know, most of the time, if there's a problem in the atmosphere inside a home, it's because of poor air circulation. But back to the article, now we also know that even just having a gas appliance in your house can have health and climate impacts, says Eric LaBelle, the study's lead author. I bet he does. Several authors of the study, including LaBelle and senior scientist at PSE Health Energy, a nonprofit research institute focused on the public health and climate efforts of energy production. Never trust a nonprofit research institute because they're getting money from somewhere and they can be influenced by that money. Keep that in mind. In the study, researchers collected 185 samples of urbanized natural gas from 159 homes across California, served by three gas companies Pacific Gas and Electric. SoCal Gas and San Diego Gas and Electric. Each of the samples contained air pollutants categorized as hazardous by the Environmental Protection Agency, meaning they are known to cause cancer and other serious health impacts. And that's very selective. 159 homes, 185 samples in 159 homes, but that's supposed to represent millions of people. It's the same argument as when I'm, sorry, Miss Kitty's in the shot here. It's the same argument that I give about research polls. I'll remind some of you, I worked for one briefly in the early 90s, and they hand pick and select people based on their responses to decide who they're going to use so they can get the results they were paid to get. How do we know where these homes were and what condition they were in? And again, 159 is supposed to represent millions of people. 
That's shady in of itself. But let's get back to the article. The most prevalent of those pollutants were benzene, a highly flammable chemical that can be colorless and odorless, which makes it hard to detect when it leaks. Long-term exposure to significant amounts of the chemical can increase the risk of blood disorders and certain cancers like leukemia. While the detected levels of the chemical in most of the samples were low, benzene accumulates in the body over a person's lifetime and health risks increase almost Literally with exposure, said Dr. Philip J. Landrigan, a pediatrician and public health professor at Boston College, who was not involved in the study. There is really no safe threshold for benzene exposure, he had it. And, you know, the same argument could be made for food coloring. You know, too much food coloring accumulates in your body and can be hazardous to your health. Fried foods. When I worked at Frito Lay, they had to measure the levels in the oil fryers very carefully because that's a carcinogen. Too much, too much of a certain, I forget what the term was for the specific enzyme, but too much can cause problems in people's health that leads to cancer and other disorders. I mean, you could make that argument about anything that you're exposed to. Cleaning products. The chemicals that they put in your water to purify it, all that chlorine, can be dangerous to your health in accumulation. But well, let's finish this off. The new report builds on earlier studies from the same research group. In one study, researchers also detected benzene and other hazardous air pollutants in samples of unburned gas collection from residences in the Boston metropolitan area. In another study conducted in California, LaBelle found that gas stoves leak significant amounts of methane even when the stoves were turned off. For the last study, researchers combined the leakage findings with new measurements of benzene in unburned gas to model potential indoor benzene concentration levels. They found that in some of the worst cases, the concentration coming from the gas hookup was similar to that found in homes with smokers. Oh God, not smokers. There are some factors that influence indoor benzene levels like the quality of ventilation, that's what I said earlier, or the size of the kitchen. But this study found benzene and unburned gas, which suggests that simply opening the windows or turning on a range hood while the stove is on will not eliminate the risk, said Kelsey Billsback, a senior scientist at PSE Health Energy. Increasingly, environmentalists and local officials in states like California and Massachusetts, no big surprise there, have pushed to phase out gas appliances in favor of electric ones mostly citing the emissions impact of burning fossil fuels like natural gas. Homes and buildings are directly responsible for about 13% of the country's greenhouse gas emissions, mostly from gas burned in stoves, ovens, hot water heaters, and furnaces. And I wonder how much of that is true. I wonder if that 13% number is actually true or not. They don't cite where that data comes from and I tried to look it up on the internet and I can't find anything specific on it to nail it down. Um, it, it's very reminiscent to me of the video I did a couple of months back on cow burps in New Zealand. They're trying to propose a tax on livestock and they quoted a number for methane production from livestock, you know, cows, sheep, goats, whatever. And the number was fraudulent. And I exposed that in the video because they said where that research data came from. But when you look up that website for the research data, they quote an entirely different number that's drastically different from what was quoted by the New Zealand government. The New Zealand government was being dishonest. And I wonder how honest that number is. But what's important here is, again, even though we're talking about California, California's trying to set a precedence. And is that alternative any better or worse? Most of the time, if you have a problem like that in your home, it's because of poor air quality, mostly due to an unsanitary environment and poor air circulation. People's homes, a lot of times, they're not clean and they're always shut up, mostly because they're not clean and those people are embarrassed about their homes, I guess. You ever watched an episode of Hoarders? You're not opening any windows there, but that's usually the issue 
as far as a health risk, again, how much of that is contributing to greenhouse gases, I don't know. I can't be sure if 13% is accurate or not. And why is it always the United States? You know, it's far worse in other countries. The United States is not nearly as bad as they make you think in the media when it comes to the production of greenhouse gases. But of course, you know, nowadays, climate change is the new boogeyman and the government can and will use this to continue to try to control its population through taxes, regulations, and fines, and whatever else they can do to you to fit you nicely into a little box. And you can see, even from the article, that in California they have already been cutting people off. New homes and new businesses don't even have gas hookups in certain counties. And if they can do it, other states can do it. And it wouldn't be that far of a jump to go from, okay, all new homes can't be built with gas hookups to you need to remove your gas hookup from your home and go all electric. And the funny thing is, there isn't enough power production for all of those electrical appliances. If you got rid of your gas stove and your your gas water heater and you may even your home may even be heated by gas and you got rid of that and replaced it with electric that's more draw on the electric grid with no way to fulfill that need outside of building more plants or increasing production in existing plants which actually may include the burning of natural gas <laughs> depending upon what kind of plant it is so there you go thoughts i mean I'm, I'm tired of and this is something they've known about for a long time this is nothing new but now they want to present it like it's new to put a scare into you and to justify trying to move away from natural gas so let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. I hope you did. Share it if you can. Probably the only way it will get seen. Um, please note the social media platforms. That's something new that has been added to help to promote the channel. If you are new to the channel and you're wondering what is the deal with all the random cat images. They are strays that my wife and I take care of and images of them actually help with the loading algorithm on YouTube, believe it or not. A tip given to us by a viewer some time ago and it actually works. If you wanted to help the channel out or the cats for that matter, there are links for that down below. Every little bit helps and we sure do appreciate it. And if that's it, then what more can I say? But stay tuned folks because there is more to come.